each and every one of you. God bless the Philippines, Nigeria, Liberia. God bless you. Some of the people are not here now. Don't mess up. You come in and cough in and doing all this and that, then those germs spread. We predicted the end of the pandemic and it's gone. But the atmosphere is still somewhat contaminated. But the pandemic is gone. We prophesied the end of it and it came to pass. You can see it. Going to the Apostles' Doctrine 200, go down to the playlist and look up prophecies. And you'll see the prophecies that I have given. We ask God to continue to bless and deliver those that would be victims of kidnappers, men killers. Since we've been praying that prayer, we've seen a lot of people delivered. Just recently, I received an article of, I think it was 225 children that were missing. They found every last one of them. Amen. Amen. of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God is moving within my soul I feel the anointing of the Most High God and I make no excuses about living for Jesus about serving God in the beauty of holiness without which no man shall see the Lord this is the wrong time to give up now. This is the wrong time to turn back now. Help, help daughter. This is the wrong time. I keep feeling and urgency in my spirit. The beloved, these really are the last days. And the coming of the Lord is sooner than we think. We don't know the day nor the hour, but we can know about 
the season or the time in which it would take place by following the scriptures. I am really nervous with much wisdom comes much grief but I don't want to play with you as a real apostle of the Lord the end is up on us there is a real urgency in my spirit that tells you you don't want to give up now this is the time to make sure that you are preaching the truth Swallow your pride because the end is closer than we think. When they give the news of the Euphrates being dried up, it really caught my attention, preacher, because the drying up of the Euphrates is found in the seven last plagues. Did you hear me? Is found in the seven last plagues of the book of Revelation. All we can do is follow the scriptures. In the book of Revelation, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord. It's a moment. I feel an anointing. In the book of Revelation, chapter 8, Verse 1 says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Now, what was said during that time? Nothing. And that's where we error today. Well, the Bible keeps silent, you need to keep silent. If the Bible doesn't say it, you don't need to say it. But today, the church world is in trouble. False doctrine has infiltrated almost every faith, every denomination, every belief. We forget that the devil is a god of this world. And we must not believe in the spirit, but we must try these spirits. And the Bible says that we need not that any man should teach us, but we have an anointing that will teach us all things that in him is no lie. So there will be no excuse for telling God 
I didn't know it. But the Holy Ghost is here to show it. This is why the ministry should be given over to ministry. So many people uh, call preachers that go full time in ministry, they call them lazy bums. You better be careful. Because God ordained that a preacher, when he has been given his assignment, and he's been called, that he gives all to the ministry. You got to be a man of faith to do that. And do it right. Because we need ministers on the front line who have been taught by the Holy Ghost to discern. Well, everybody else is busy doing what they do. It's the man of God's job to see that their spirituality is intact. He can't do that if he has to share his time, your time, God's time with the world 24-7 continuously. You must recognize when your time comes. And when your call comes, you must be ready to obey. He doesn't call preachers just to sit around. A lot of you pastors are greedy, you're covetous. You got ministers, but you don't want to use them. You don't want to send them out because you think they may be better than you. It's not about you. It's about the gospel. And you should train up and groom young men and women to work in the ministry. God sends out his ministers when the time is right. He doesn't expect it for a pastor to do it all by himself. You know your ministry is so unhealthy when you got able people that can stand in the gap. Many men would ask me, when you leave the country, how is it that you leave the country as often as you do? They've asked me this for years. They say, we left people in the church. When we came back, they tore the church up. And some organizations call pastors from other churches to pass over their congregation so that nobody would steal so-called the people that don't belong to them anyway. So what do you do? I do what the Bible says. Raise up from among yourself men. Ordain people from amongst yourself that the people know. So we pray that God give us able preachers and prophetess that can help sustain, who preaches the same message. As the sign of a healthy ministry, you're raising up others that can fill in the gap. It's not a com competitive thing, preachers. You don't get upset because a young minister is on fire, has a good delivery. The people love them. That's what you want. And one that respects you, that's what you want. You want ministers to do well. I just got back from Africa and I watched the ministers preach. And I actually sat there and watched each sermon. And I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed myself. It was a blessing to me to see that they preached the same doctrine. But one minister was on the radio and he said, and the Bible said that the hearts have gross, gross something. And I told him later, Sunday, that it, meant, it said that their hearts grew cold, not gross. And he texted me back with respect. The word growth, and he showed me the scripture. <laughs> I said, well done. <laughs> There was a scripture that said that. I was coming from another scripture. I was right too, but he read from the scripture and he showed the scripture. And pastors, I said, well done. Because that's how we are taught. Amen. Show me Bible. Don't be afraid to let God raise up people in the midst. Those of you that God are raising up on the ministry, you must be respectful and submissive. As long as you are submissive, <coughs> they man, the sky is the limit. Because God respects order. And it is time that we pray that God send laborers into the field. And, and my prayer was always let me be one of them. Because the laborers are few. This is not the time to play church and play ministry. 
talking about, oh, how you love Jesus, but you're not willing to let go of nothing. Ooh, say it again. <laughs> now look at this, Revelation chapter 8. Let me show you something. This is where we are. Now these trumpets and seals have already been loose in the spirit realm. We're just living up to them. And verse 2 says, read. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and there were cast upon the earth and the third part of trees were burnt up and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures were in the sea and had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters and the name of the star is called wormwood and the third part of the waters were wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter we have seen these three trumpets for years the contamination of waters the contamination of marine life fishes and mammals and stuff dying in the water Birds falling out of the sky. And the most common is the brush fires. The fires that we have every year getting worse and worse. And in America, they say there's only two reasons for brush fires. Either man started it or they call it an act of God. Mm -hmm. In your insurance, they have policies that cover the acts of God. Things out of their control. We have seen the contamination of waters, fires. Ships throughout wars and in different situations being destroyed. Bitterness. Everything is contaminated. The oil spills that have contaminated waters. The thousands of brush fires that takes hundreds of men to try to put out. Green grass burnt up. Sea becoming like blood. A third part of creatures which are in the sea die. Ships destroyed. Bitter water. Poison waters. We have been seeing these things up to this day. Now, this is why uh, somebody says, well, how does the devil get the glory out of this? I didn't hear the question. How does the devil get the glory out of this? I'm glad you're listening. Thanks, man. Because people are praying to the Lord, bind that devil. They send all this destruction. They say, Lord, bind that devil. I got news for you. It ain't the devil. <laughs> It ain't the devil. They were not demons blowing those trumpets. Those are holy angels. It's the wrath of God beginning to fall upon the earth. And yet those are only the beginning of sorrow. It ain't the devil. He ain't in charge. But we see it. Yes. 
God has a particular of us. And those of you that know my doctor, if you ever see uh, two of the opposite sex praying together, they're, they're family members. Our women pray with our women and our men pray with our men except when the preacher is praying for whosoever. Preachers have a liberty, but they are family members. You may see a mother hugging a son. It's a son or a grandson. You may see a young man and a young daughter. They're brothers and sisters. So just for doctrine or sake. Amen? Amen. We don't mingle like that. Amen. And so we have people that come in and visitors that come in. Mm -hmm. You see? So uh, our women are taught to be silent. Yes. When the time is right, they can amen, but they don't speak out of turn. Now, this is where we're headed. The fourth trumpet. Listen carefully. All these three trumpets have come to pass. They have come to pass, and they are happening now. Yeah. This is the end of the book. Yeah. <clears throat> but now, read the fourth trumpet. This is what I've always thought we are looking for now. Because all these other things have been happening for years. Yeah. Read. And the fourth angel sounded. And the third part of the sun was smitten. And the third part of the moon. And the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened. And the day shone not for a third part of it. And the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven. Saying with a loud voice. Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. By reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels. Which are yet to sound. This is what we're looking for that has not taken place. Something is headed toward our galaxy. And it's going to smash into the sun and the moon and the stars. I'm not a scientist, but that lets me know that the reason why we have multiple stars and things is to protect the earth, number one, to give light upon the earth. Number two, it protects the earth from debris of its space that would fall upon the earth and possibly destroy it. But instead, they crash into the things that are out there. It's not going to hit the earth, but it's going to be stopped by the sun, the moon, and the stars, and it's going to hinder the lighting of the sun and moon. Just like in, like, like in Alaska, it's, it's evening for six months. But worldwide, will be affected by when the time the sun comes out in the moon because of that impact. That's what we are looking for now. And the science has declared that something is headed in this direction. They declare that something is coming this way. And then he says, woe unto the other trumpets. Now what is supposed to happen after this that's on its way? Read the next verse. Chapter 9, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven upon the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth had power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he had stricken a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like the scorpions and there were stings in their tails. And there was power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. One woe is past, 
And behold, there will come two woes more hereafter. What verse are you on? Verse 12 now. Well, that was 12. <clears throat> oh, look at here. What, what chapter were you at? Nine. Okay, in verse 12. Now, this is to take place after whatever's going to hit our atmosphere hits. It's another pandemic, another plague, but this time there is no medicine that can even possibly come close to helping because these are demons. The angel of the bottomless pit. These are fallen angels that will be let loose out of the pit to torment man. Man will want to die. The pain will be so great, but you won't be able to. God will remove death from you. You won't be able to take death. The purpose of it is to, to uh, torment the rebellious. And it says for five months. We can take the literal, but we know it, it won't be but for a short time because the pain will be so great. That's what we are looking for after this thing hits the sun. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Now read. Verse 13. Verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. And them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and of brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold, and of silver, and brass, and of stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, now you know, nor walk. An idol is an idol. It doesn't care what material is made out of. <coughs> Same with jewelry. Okay, if it's plastic or rubber, if it's, if it's jewelry, it falls under the line of idolatry. It's what it represents. Neither repent they of their murders, nor of their sorcery nor the fornication, nor the thefts. These are in the last days, and it's still talking about idols. But notice, the rivers that are bound in the Euphrates shall be loose. Now notice, some people think that these are demons. But number one, it doesn't say they came out of any bottomless pit. And John said he saw, th he saw them, he said, he said that, then first of all, it was an army of 200 million people. And it says that I saw, I saw the horses in the vision and, and them that sat on them. And then in the end it says, but the rest of the men didn't die. Uh, that, that were left from the plagues. Them were people. What John was seeing was the future of modern day warfare. The, 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 the horses like heads with, with, with big, the heads were real big like tanks. The helicopters that spit uh, machine gun fire out of their tails and and, and, and things that shoot fire. He was seeing modern day technology, but he didn't know how to explain it. He didn't attribute these to being demons. He described them the best way he knew how. And the horses of the heads were as, as the heads of lions. And out of their mouth issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. He saw them that sat on them, but he gave no description of them, as he did Apollyon. And he called them devils. And then he said, but the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, this is a war that involved men. John was seeing modern day technology 
and he explained it the only way he saw fit. This war hasn't taken place yet. Apollyon hasn't been loose yet. Neither has these things crashed into the sun yet. But when the seventh angel shall blow, then shall be the end of all things. Look at verse 15 of Son chapter 11. Okay. Read it. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. Now just for a minute, go back to chapter 10, verse 7. Chapter 10, mm -hmm. verse, verse 7. Mm -hmm. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. When the seventh angel sounds, then the mystery of God will become complete. So we see these seven last vials come at the end of the seven trumpets. So now, well watch this. And then verse 15 says the seventh trumpet uh, was blown. And there was a great earthquake. Uh, the kingdom, well the voice saying the kingdom of the word of uh, this world have become the kingdom of God. Okay, but now, and the nations, the nations were angry and that the wrath has come in the time that they be judged. Now, verse 12, chapter 12, chapter 12 <laughs> talks about a war in heaven that has not yet taken place. Okay. But it describes a woman with 12 stars representing Israel. And it gives the history of this woman. How that she brought forth the man-child and the devil, the dragon, went to destroy the man-child, but the man-child was helped, speaking of the Christ. Then it talks about a war in heaven where Michael fought and the devil fought. But the devil was cast out, no longer able to enter into the heavens. That has not happened yet, because the devil can still go up and talk and blaspheme and condemn you before God. But in this time, he will not be able to, when that seventh trumpet blows. He will not be able to. He will be uh, cast down for good to the earth until his judgment. And so, that seventh trumpet opens the door. To the last week of Daniel's prophecy. The 11th chapter is where the time clock starts ticking. God gave Israel 400 and I think it was 90, 90 years to deal with his people. And at a certain time, the Messiah would be cut off. And the Messiah was cut off exactly at that precise time. I believe it was around the 69th week. And the clock stopped. The prophetic clock stopped ticking. Because the 490 years was to Israel. But when Messiah was cut off, the clock stopped ticking. Because now God was going to turn toward the Gentiles. And people are wondering, so when does it start again? It will start when God will begin to once again reel Israel in. It starts in the 11th chapter of Revelations with the two prophets. The last week of Daniel, a week of years. The last seven years that God will be dealing with Israel before he comes. Starts counting again. In Revelation chapter 11 with the two prophets and their prophecy was for exactly three and a half years. 
Tribulation is only three and a half years, not seven. But the Bible says that the devil comes and destroys them. And then they die in Jerusalem, and then they're called up into heaven. Fulfilling Jesus' word that it cannot be that a prophet die outside of Jerusalem. That's why I propose to you that those two prophets were the, uh, in, in the prophecy of Zechariah, the two olive branches that stand before the Lord of the whole earth was Elijah and Moses. Because the Bible does show Elijah and Moses in the transfiguration standing before the Lord of the whole earth, talking about his death. And the, and the plague that these men did, these two men or have known to execute such judgment. Amen. And they were of the Old Testament order because Christians couldn't destroy what they did. And, but they were the only two prophets that didn't die in Israel. Moses was buried outside of the promised land and Elijah was taken up. Somebody said, what about Enoch? He wasn't a part of Israel. Moses was buried in Enoch and Elijah was taken up and now here they are together. And now they have come forth to plague the world for his wickedness. And it just so happened when they died, the Bible made note that they died in Jerusalem. Everybody rejoiced and then God said, come up here. But they stood up and then they went up. It wasn't a rapture. Their bodies were taken off. They went on up to be a part of the cloud of the great witnesses. Chapter 12 you see the war in heaven. And that the devil is angry because he has a short time. What's that short time? The latter half of that last week, three and a half years. And then in chapter 13, you see the Antichrist rising and the false prophet rising. But in chapter 16, The last plagues in chapter, in chapter 15 talks about the last plagues. And then chapter 16 explains them. Turn to chapter 16 and let's read about the last plagues from that seventh trumpet. These are the last vows that should come forth. The last plagues. Read. Chapter 16. Mm -hmm, verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of wrath of God upon the earth. <coughs> and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. Notice the mark of the beast is here. Am I talking right now? I've never taught this openly, <coughs> but I'm teaching it by revelation. Notice the mark of the beast is here now because he's been released. He's been manifested, like I told you. So that last trumpet, when it blows, a man is entering us into the Antichrist, time of the Antichrist. Read. And upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers, and fountain of rivers, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, and was, and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord, God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, everybody says in the great tribulation, everybody's going to get through. No, these things are attacking, and these plagues are attacking those who got the mark. Those who worship the image and the beast. Not everybody. Not everybody. Those that don't receive the mark, 
won't be in danger. This is specifically to destroy the kingdom of the Antichrist. Just as Moses in the children of Israel, Egypt was plagued, but the land where the Israelites were didn't, didn't get touched by any of it. But you shall lose your life. Love not your life unto death. You refuse that mark. If it calls you to die, so be it. The wait ain't that long. <laughs> Great tribulation is only three and a half years, bro. We can run high that long. But notice something. Read the sixth one again. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits. Hold on. I just saw something. And the water was. I, I'm only saying it because I'm alive. And the water thereof was, is that present tense or past tense? Was dried up. That's past tense. Wow. Did y'all see that? Now, this is a part of the last place. Now, when we get here, the waters were dried up. And we're seeing that now. But this is what I want you to see. Read, preacher. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Mm -hmm. For they are the spirits of devils. Demonic spirits with the attribute of frogs, leaping, jumping from one person to the next. Huh? And what did they do? Working miracles. Working life. The, 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 the spirits of devils working miracles. Go ahead. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the wor whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now, when you speak of working miracles, Thessalonians tells us how lying wonders, uh -huh. lying miracles to deceive. And what's the purpose of these demons? To gather men for the battle of what? Great day of God Almighty. The great day of God Almighty, Armageddon. Read. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called to the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial unto the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Uh, heaven. Every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. For the plague thereof was exceedingly great. Now, in Revelation, you can't take the whole book <laughs> chapter by chapter. Sometimes it jumps. But there's so important you can put together. And I just want to show you something. These demons will go forth to prepare the people for Armageddon. Huh? And the Euphrates will be dry. This is what these demons are preparing the people for. Turn to Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage of the supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servants of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. 
And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule with them with a rod of iron. Rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress out of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come, and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Now follow me. This is the second coming of Christ. He has called the birds to eat the dead bodies that will be left and slain by the heaven, the army from heaven. Many people mistaken in the gospel where it says one shall be, two shall be in the bed, one taken, the other left, at the meal, one taken, the other left. They call that a rapture, which it is not. The disciples asked the Lord, where shall they go? And Jesus said, wherever the dead bodies, mm -hmm. the carcass are, yeah. That will the eagles be gathered together. This is an attack on earth, and the angels will come to get rid of the wicked. They'll take those that have been that that that, that, that have not passed the test, and they will take them to them again, and put them in there with the rest of the dead bodies to be eaten by the birds and the fowl. Where shall they be taken? Wherever the dead bodies are, that will the carcass be gathered. The carcass is that will the eagles be gathered together. Where they at? They're going to be in Arm Gaddy. One shall be taken. They're taking them somewhere. They're taking them to where the bodies are. Arm Gaddy. We just read that. Now watch this. And I saw. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. Now stop. Then we just read in the sixth vial where the angels went forth out of the mouth of the beast, the false prophet. And and, 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 and and the uh, the Antichrist and, and, and the uh, image, how they went to gather the people together, the nation together for what? For the war. We're seeing that right here, are we not? Are we not seeing that? And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together with demons to see them to make war against him that sat on the horse. That's what we just read in the sixth vow. But notice what's this. And it says, and the beast was what? And the beast was taken and, and with him the false prophet uh -huh. that wrought miracles before him. Mm -hmm with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, uh -huh. and them that worshipped his image, mm -hmm. these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Uh -huh. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. This is the battle of again. This is the second coming of Christ. But notice something. It gave the judgment of the false prophet, it gave the judgment of the beast, but it didn't give the judgment of the image. Technology is something else. Why? Because the image of a beast is not a human being. It is technology. It has no soul. Is that the wisdom of God? There's no judgment of the image. Who gave the order to take the mark and to bow because it wasn't human. When I was a young man, 18 and 19, when I read about the image of the beast, I said, how are they going to make another man? That was 47 years ago. Oh, wait, how were they not? They got robots and everything. In intelligence doing everything. 
driving cars with no driver. They got a McDonald's here, somewhere here that's ran by robots. Nobody's there. You've got different countries making human androids. They look human, they sit down, and everybody's questioning them and they're talking. Now that shall increase, the image of the beast is not human, it's technology. That's why there's no judgment. You see why we need the Holy Ghost? Amen. Amen. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. Amen. To show us these things. Amen. That we're not human beings. That Mary had no conception. Mm -hmm. The things that we overlook except the Holy Ghost. Amen. Open our eyes. Read 20 quickly. I'll get to my point. Read it fast. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain on his hand. Now notice the false prophet and the antichrist, the beast, was cast alive. Mm -hmm. They were taken straight off the earth and put in the lake of fire. And you know how I believe it? Because it was the pathway to the lake of fire that I saw. Amen. Nobody was in it. The lake of fire was created for the devil and his angels. But God have mercy when the mankind will enter into the house of Satan before he does. That lying devil. Man will go to the lake of fire before the devil is. How low down can you get? And they were cast alive. How is that? When that fire came in my face to take me down. I felt the heat, but it didn't consume me. Because see, that fire in the lake of fire is not to consume you. It's to torment. It's made for angels. Where the worm doesn't die. It's made to torment. So when man ends up in the lake of fire, the flesh will still be there, but they'll be tormented. Because it was made for angels. So men would have to take the torment that belonged to angelic beings. It would not be a torment. Jesus. I've been down there. I saw it. I saw the pathway. Now the Bible's talking about it. It was empty when I saw it. But it ain't going to be empty for long. Human beings, excuse my, excuse my expression, mankind would be the first to enter into the lake of fire. And they would be taken straight off the earth. Now you see when I told you when I went down uh, uh, to the path of hell, son, I was laying in my bed. And that when I closed my eyes of the vision, that fire came up on me three times. I was taken clean. I was taken straight down. I was taken clean out of my room. Whether in the body or not, I can't tell you. I was taken straight down. They're going to be taken straight off the earth. Guess how? alive because when you go to the lake of fire you will be alive everybody will resurrect for the great white throne judgment and whoever names are not found in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire but you better not be in that judgment you can get ugly with the devil because he ain't going nowhere now the two men got cast alive into the lake of fire but the devil went to jail to be let loose again. I told you there's a contract between God and the devil. The devil knows he's damned. He knows the Bible better than people do. And the legion of the devil said to Jesus, you come to torment us before the time? It ain't yet. It ain't, it ain't time yet, Lord. They put the word on him. So why don't you call on God with the word? You say it in your word, Lord. We're more than conquerors. You said in your word. You give them all power over them. You said in your word. If the devil can use the word, we can too. In a right way. And those devils didn't lie. The devil lied to us, but he can't lie to God. 
And the sons of God came together preaching. And the devil came in. God said, what are you doing here? He said, quickly, I'm trying to deceive somebody. I'm walking to and fro to see who I can see. You get convicted and you fight it off. But the devils believe in God and they tremble. The devil tell you they don't believe in God. He know God better than some of us do. That's where he came from. Read. Verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. And the judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Jesus said, he that overcome us shall sit down with me in my throne. You should come to eat with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's a thousand year reign. That's what he's talking about. We will live, if we come up in that first resurrection, we will have made it. And that's what's almost here. Don't you get what I'm trying to tell you? And we will rule the nations with him. This world, we will rule for a thousand years. We will rule with him. Watch this. Read. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The rest of the dead that didn't get caught up in this first resurrection. Who's coming in the first resurrection? Everybody from Adam righteous all the way through the last person that, that gets saved before the Lord comes, before that door closes. That's how we'd be able to sit down with Abraham and Isaac and David and fellowship. All the righteous will be resurrected then. The souls in heaven will be united with their bodies to be changed incorruptible. The armies in heaven ain't the same. They ain't coming to fight. The dead in Christ shall rise first when we see Jesus. The souls in heaven shall go forth, go down, be reunited with the bodies and be resurrected to uh, immortality. It will be changed. They will be changed. They'll put on their immortal bodies and they'll meet the Lord in the air. That's why the Paul said, they that are dead will Christ ring with them. But the armies in heaven, uh, uh, Michael and his angels, they come in to fight, not the saints. But Christ will bring the souls that have already died, Stephen and Paul and all them, and, and Moses, he, 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 he will bring them with him. When it's time to go forth, they will go forth, they will, he will bring them with them, they will go forth, uh, enter into their bodies that will be changed. The dead in Christ will rise first, the souls and their bodies shall unite. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Like if they came with him. And these, those of us that are left and remain shall be called up together with them. That's what Matthew says. And he shall gather his elect, not from the four corners of the earth, but from the four winds of the heavens. All over the world they shall be resurrected. And the angels shall gather them in. And will be in the air with Christ. While the angels go forth. One shall be taken and the other will left. Another shall be taken and the other left. And the battle shall go forth. And blood will be up to the horse's bridle. As men's eyes are falling out of their heads. The scripture says the angels go forth. And they purge the land. Where are we? We're in the heaven still with him. He hadn't hit the earth yet. The angels can really clean up now. Why? Because all the saints are not there. Amen. Huh? That's how. All the saints are in the air while the angels are tearing down. They ain't got to worry about nothing because all the God's people uh, that, that, that would make that first resurrection is right there. And Zechariah, I think it is 14 and 1. And then the Lord, where God's going to do? He's going to step his foot on Mount Olive. That's where we come down with him. Amen. The Bible makes it plain. Amen. But watch this. Read. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such a second death have no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. You see what I'm saying? That first resurrection. There's two resurrections. This first resurrection unto life is when he comes back now. And we make it now. That's it. We have made it. Amen. And it's right here. Yes, Lord. You don't want, if you miss this, that's it. 
And you say you say, that's it. Listen. Now watch this. Verse 7, quickly. And when the thousand years were expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, God and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that had deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The beast and the false prophet are. Now they ain't got that yet. But John let us know that the word of God is sure. When these men come on the scene, it's a sure thing. They're going to end up in the lake of fire. And they're there still because they weren't devoured. They're being tormented. And the devil will be put there where they are after the thousand years. Now what's so sad about it is once he is loose, he's still going to deceive a great deal of the world. And they will have God on earth with thousands of millions of people who have been resurrected and made perfect. And man still will choose corruption. That's why you better do right to get saved now. Because men as a whole love darkness. Well, if God do this for me, I'm going to get it right. No, you won't if it ain't in your heart. Amen, amen. A thousand years. Age shall increase. No devil to tempt you, but there will still be sin and rebellion. And God is not a fool. You think he's just going to let you into your end? That's why he saved the devil. He's the tempter. He's the tester. God lets him lose to see how many people are for real. How many people, after a thousand years of no devil, and yet what's going to happen? He's going to deceive a great deal of the world again, but this time he's not going to give him no problem. He's not going to waste no time. Fire to heaven, no war. He devours them. That's the last and final battle. It's the battle of God against Magog. That's it. That's the last and final battle. It has nothing to do with the Antichrist. He's already judged. See, man is corrupt without the Antichrist. But it's the last attempt of the devil to go against God and get mankind destroyed. And he's still going to deceive the nations again. And fire shall devour them. So then it's the great white throne judgment. From this chapter on, it talks about the new heaven and the new earth. And like I said, you see the judgment of the beast. You see the judgment of the uh, false prophet. But you don't see the judgment uh, of the uh, image of the beast. Because he's not human. The image of the beast is not human. It's technology. So now, I said all that, all of that I said, the next verses are the new heaven and the new earth. But how did we get there? Because we read in the last vows that the Euphrates was dried up. In the last vows. And that purpose was for the battle of Armageddon. The nations across and to come. So Jerusalem to fight. And then Jesus said, I come quickly. Y'all not hearing me. Amen. It said that the Euphrates was dried up to prepare for the battle of Armageddon. Y'all not hearing me. Oh, you hear me preaching? It was dried up to prepare for the battle of Armageddon. Yeah. Demons went forth to deceive. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. What I think is drying up. Amen. How close are we? Amen. That's what I'm trying to show you. Amen. The seed is being set for the second coming of Christ. Amen. We are seeing this with our own eyes. Amen. We are those upon whom the end of the world has come. And you want to play church? Play false doctrine. Play around with spirits. Trying to keep your eyes off of what God is doing. He said, behold, I come quickly. Amen. And you 
Euphrates was dried. That's what it said, right? The Euphrates was dried up, right? Hey, John, you know when the Euphrates began to dry up? What? According to the calendar of this world, around 2023. John couldn't tell you that because he didn't see it. But we can because we are looking at it. And yet you think the world's going to get on the boat, son? No. It's not going to phase the world. Jesus. Just like Jesus on earth for a thousand years didn't phase him. <laughs> Only a repentant heart will cause you to be saved. Amen. Not no fancy miracle. Amen. It can help, but nothing give me this, give me that. No, no. If your heart's not ready for Christ, it's no good. Amen. If God were here, I'd do this. No. God was there and they still did wrong. Amen. You got to want to do right in your heart. Amen, amen. Did you see what I just did? Yes. I jumped to the end of the book and showed you the last plague. Amen. Euphrates was one of them. Then for the first time I realized that I never studied it in detail. I've only studied it quarter years, but I'm pretty sure my insight is accurate because the Holy Ghost teaches and preaches with me. Amen. And it said in the Euphrates, was dried up. It was already dry. John didn't live to see that, but we have. Now we see why it's drying up. We see why it's drying up now. Why? To prepare the way. Mm -hmm. ah! yes. For the second coming of Christ. Yes. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yes. To prepare the way. Demons will take advantage out of the mouth of the Antichrist, the mouth of the false prophet, the mouth of the dragon, and deceive the nations across that river headed towards Jerusalem for the battle. And the valley of Armageddon and the valley is in existence today. What are we thinking? I'm not going to get caught up in this. I'm not going to fall out with that. When you see these things come to pass, know that the coming is near. People, we are living to see this. This generation has seen things that no one has seen. We live to see Israel become a nation after 2,000 years of prophecy. In the Six Day War, 1948, Israel became a nation. We see this. We live to see Jerusalem once again be established as the capital of Israel. Trump did it. We live to see this. We're hearing people talking about restoring the sacrifices and finding the original plot for the uh, temple of God that was destroyed. Jesus said the temple would be destroyed. Our history tells the story. Is anybody listening? Yes. And the Euphrates was dried up. Preparing the way for the nations. And the spirit like falls out of the mouth of the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. To gather them together for the marriage supper. Of the, oh, somebody's about to be married. The bride of Christ consists of two spiritual women. Israel and the church. Who will become one in him. Amen. All you people saying God got one wife. You must not know God. <laughs> Israel is God's wife. Mm -hmm. And the church is God's wife. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Unless you think that Israel belongs to the father. The church belongs to the son. And the church is the father's daughter-in-law. Don't you know that whatever you join your flesh to, you become one flesh? Yes. That don't mean you just one person. That's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. The man and the woman became one flesh, but it was two people. But when they joined themselves, they were one in spirit, one in the flesh. Yes. No, you're not the day that joins themselves to Christ. There could be a thousand of us. We are one spirit yes. in Christ Jesus, though it's a thousand of us. 
He said in Jeremiah, he said, they didn't know me by my name, y'all, when I brought them out of Egypt. And he said, when I was a husband unto them. These are the words of Yah. But they were one in spirit with him when they obeyed. Know you not that they that join themselves to a harlot is one flesh? You know how many men a, a, a prostitute has had? But everybody that join yourself to her becomes what? One flesh. Don't be ignorant, people. God is going to bring back his backslidden wife, the nation of Israel, and he's going to marry the church as a bride. And Romans said, he shall, Ephesians the Romans said, he shall take in twain and make them one in him. He shall take two and make them one in him. God has two spiritual wives that shall become one in him. One spirit with him. That's why the new city of Jerusalem, it talks about the gates or name what? The 12 tribes of Israel. That's, that, that's Israel. And the 12 foundations of what? The 12 apostles, that's the church. The bride is the combination of Israel and the church being made one in Christ. This is Bible. Understand what we just saw. We just understood some mysteries that have been hidden from the foundations of the world. Many men and women would have loved to understand this. Thank God for the wisdom. Yes. How close are we? Jesus. Well, what's the purpose of the Euphrates drying up the coming of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Oh, the coming of the Lord. Yes. I feel an urgency. We are closer than we think. Jesus. Anybody hear me? Amen. We're going to be taking up don't worry about it. Uh, we're going to be raptured out before the tribulation. You know how many prophecies have fallen? 2,000 they said we're going to be taken out. Then one preacher laughed and said, better safe than sorry. What do you mean? And then you got some people say it doesn't pertain to salvation. What are you talking about? All of God's teaching pertains to salvation. No lies are in the end. Why do you think Paul wrote this alone? Don't be so moved as by word or letter from us. Is that the day of the Lord is at hand. That day shall not come except. He said this, and some people have had their faith overthrown because some have said it's already happened. Don't tell me it don't make a difference. He taught on his coming. And he said out of his own mouth, after the day of the tribulation of those days, shall we see. He said it out of his own mouth. Not only that, it says that the, some people teach that the pre-rapture will be taken and take it up into heaven for seven years in the temple of heaven and they come back. But when you read Revelation, it says that no man can enter into the temple until all the plague holes. So where are they going? Where are they going? Then he said, he's going to sneak in. Y'all seen the movies Left Behind. He's going to sneak in and cars are going to crash, airplane, because he's going to snatch us out of here. When the Bible says, Jesus said, if they say I'm in a secret place, don't believe it. Don't believe it. And you telling me it doesn't make a difference if it ain't got nothing to do with salvation. All of God's doctrine has to do with salvation. Because if you preach the wrong coming, then you will overthrow the faith of people. That's why many people have walked away from time centers. 1975, when I was in high school, I was in high school, mother, you remember the young man that quit school. He said, why is the world coming to an end? Because Jehovah Witness just said that it was coming to an end. And so he just stopped going to school. And that ain't the only time they uh, proper alive. But it just so happened I was alive to see that. Amen. He just stopped going to school. The world coming to an end. <laughs> and then here recently somebody said on the third day the world was coming to an end. I was at the dentist's office and she asked me, are we going to be here tomorrow? I said, daughter, if the Lord be will, we'll be here. <laughs> and when the 2000s scared, People were calling around, and uh, an old mother, she's no longer with us, she called and said, Bishop, what are you telling your church to do? I said, what do you mean, mother? Are you telling, how are you telling them to prepare? I said, I'm not telling them anything. She said, why is that? Because I have not received a word from a true prophet anyway. 
says, now if I hear the voice of a true prophet, mm -hmm. then I'll, I will obey that. But I haven't heard it. And God ain't told me. So we ain't doing nothing. And nothing happened. Amen. That's why you got to have an ear to hear. Amen. They may find, I don't know if I'm prophesying or not. They may try to find something that looks, just remember I'm telling y'all this. They might come up with something scandalous that looks so real that they say it can prove that the Bible's not right. They might find something like that, but you know what? Don't even buy it. Amen. <laughs> Don't even believe it. It would be a straight out lie and deception. And it'll probably have nobody's name on it. Like the Watchtower. Like the Apocryphus. Don't know who wrote them. The Septuagint. Even though the Septuagint was the uh, Old Testament in Greek, Greek was the first language the Hebrew was translated into. Which carries more weight? The Hebrew does. Amen. The Greek came from the Hebrew. Quit being silly. Is anybody understanding? I want to deliver my soul. Amen. We are seeing the Euphrates dry up. And according to the scriptures, it is dried up by the time the Antichrist comes to prepare a way for the second coming. So that means Antichrist is, hello, somewhere. Oh, the rainbow. <laughs> Antichrist is there. Get on with it now. <laughs> somewhere. It's getting set for him. <laughs> uh, is he your mailman? I'm just talking. I'm just talking. Is he born now? Is he over there in Antichrist country? Around Iraq, Syria, Iran. Because Iran, Ethiopia will be his footstools. Is he like a Hitler who wanted to be an artist? But wasn't good enough, so he saw a small political movement, so he joined in that political movement, and this is easy. And he worked his way up to high Hitler. Mm -hmm. He shall be a man and do it with the power of the devil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he proclaim himself as God. Oh, I haven't seen one. Well, I didn't see one and was given an invitation to come eat at his prayer mountain. His mother's name was Joseph and his mother's name was Mary and his daddy's name was Joseph. And he gave me an invitation to come and eat with him. He had an interest in me in Russia. He said, I, I, I want to get into Russia. He said, you can come to my prayer mountain. And he sent me some videotape. Oh, I know the word of God is true. Many false prophets shall arise. And, 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 but I didn't go because he, I wasn't fit to pray to him. That's right. And when I prayed to, to God, I said, Lord, I pray to you and in the name of your appointed son, the Hebrew, Apollos of Hebrew, the appointed son of God. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. I've sat there with one. Tell me that Christ ain't coming. Don't tell me he ain't coming. We all saw the Jim Jones massacre. How you get hundreds of people to get into a crate and be put on a cargo airplane and taken from one country to the next in a crate. And you all, 800 so many people did it. Now if he been a man can convince people to get into a crate. Risking suffocation and everything. Mm -hmm. And be put in a plane and taken to another country. Being a man. What do you think a man endowed with the power the devil can do? Jesus. Take my mark. Your head or your hand. If you don't. He, he, that's why I'm saying don't get caught up in the system. Don't be leaning on this government because the Antichrist is going to hit you where it hurts. You can't buy or sell. You can't eat. 
You want your stamps? Take a stamp. No. No. You want your government check? Take a stamp. No. Y'all can have it all. You can have it all. So don't get caught up in the system depending on this word. And they didn't repent of that sauce. Yeah, yeah, that includes their uh, ungodly medications that are ungodly. Yeah. <laughs> Things that are not edifying for you. That's right. But you know God gave us urge for medicine. Yep, uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. Don't forget your checkup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your physical, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> but it's that close. Uh -huh, uh -huh. For those of you in the night, the YouTube cut me off one day because I was speaking on uh, the pharmaceutical industry. They gave me an understanding and I understood what they said. You see, so I just want them to know that it ain't the same thing. Amen. Now I know they're watching. Amen. Hey, YouTube is. Let them watch on. Got your attention, yeah. but I do understand. Understand just what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta be careful what you say, though, people. Yeah, man. I understand that because you can start a riot. Uh -huh. Just like Trump saying, drink some bleach or do something to cleanse you, and people start ignoring it. <laughs> so you gotta be careful what you say. I do understand that. I ain't mad at him. You see? I'm not mad at him. I understand that. Now, This first time I ever talked this in all my years of preaching. I'm a prophecy teacher. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's coming up now. Amen. You saw how I said that last trumpet with the last vial opened up the time of Antichrist, right? Mm -hmm. And when we started reading it, it said these vials were being poured out on the beast. Mm -hmm. Now I've never seen that before, never said it before. Mm -hmm. But my Holy Ghost teaches me as I go. Mm -hmm. Euphrates is dried up. Now we see in, 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 this, in the last vials where I said it was dried up because it's starting to dry up now. Now we're waiting on that fourth trumpet, that thing to come into our galaxy that's been headed toward the earth to, to crash with it. After that, we're headed for demons being let out of the bottomless pit with a disease that cannot be cured. After that, around the Euphrates area, now the water's about gone, so I guess them demons are still there. Everybody thinking on YouTube, we hear strange noise and we see this. Huh? The demons ain't been let loose yet because if they were let loose, then there'd be a war of over 200 million people. And that war is coming. That's what we're looking for now. We're looking for this object to crash into the atmosphere. We're looking for demons to be let loose with a deadly disease that cannot be healed. And we're looking for another major war with at least 200 million people around the Gulf area, the Euphrates area. Around that region. Why? Because there's some devils. Once again, now there's some devils waiting to start happening. And don't get mad. Don't get mad at Satan because if I'm correct, it's God that's going to let him loose. Amen. Hello. Amen. And Jesus, after he got baptized, was led of the Holy Ghost. What for? Be to be tempted of the devil. So stop it. Right. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost devil ain't got nothing on the Holy Ghost. So what's he worried about? Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to face the devil. Man, you got me. <laughs> Holy Ghost say, you got me. You worry about that devil. I got this. God bless you, son. Uh, son, Mark, son, son, Robert. Yeah, yeah, Robert. You got uh, McDonald's, something that's got nobody there, just robots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just robots. Mm -hmm. You know, that's electronic stuff. Y'all don't get too caught up in that. You know, they hacking computers, they hacking bank accounts. 
And I've seen enough flicks whereby they want to assassinate you and your car door lock. It can't start because the man got a control. It's just, it's just your blessing. Somebody hacks your car. Take control of it because they don't like you. You see what I'm saying? And you out of control. Or you wake up one day and your car is driving off. Because so somebody knows how to hack. They're hacking everything. They're, they're hacking everything now. You see? You don't want to get one with your total electronic. No, don't get into that. Get your horse I would not get on a plane without a pilot. Man, no, 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 I'm not getting in the car without a driver. Are you serious? No, I'm not doing that. I'd rather have a horse. What, what's that documentary? Uh, what's that documentary uh, Will Smith was in? I Robot? What? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all didn't get that? I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh, the documentary, I Robot. Uh, Will Smith did a, remember a movie on how the one robot had his own mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I call it the documentary. <laughs> 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 so those international, it was just a movie where they showed that they were making robots and all of a sudden the robot developed a mind of their own. Uh -huh. They had something, a wrong SIM card or something. Uh -huh. And they started attacking humans. Yeah. You said, bring me the coffee, and the robot said. <laughs> and, oh, no. No, and next thing you know, the man flying out the window. <laughs> so you, you don't trust electronics like that. And, and, and don't get so caught up in government help and things like this, That's because the Antichrist is going to use that system. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're doing it going to hit you where it hurts. And That's just right. like it was with the test, test right? Mm -hmm. You want to work, take the test. You don't take you don't take the shot, you don't work. A lot of people didn't take it. I didn't. But I'm just saying. Why? Because I really feared for my life. Some told me if I took that shot, be the last. I'm staring. That's just how I felt. I wasn't taking it. Straight up, straight down. It ain't even been proven. And your people called in to see how they got hurt, and then they said, Well, you're gonna have some casualty. Man, won't you be a casualty? Don't be no casualty. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine right now. Yeah. You see, put some strange in me. Uh -huh. A lot of people have never been the same. Uh -huh. I got that right. So you know, be careful. Uh -huh. You say you love God, you will be tried and tested. Uh -huh. You have to stand up to what you believe. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm trying to tell everybody, I don't believe this urgency that I feel is myself. A prophetic, the coming is sooner than we think. We are seeing it. When that Euphrates started drying up, that's a part of the last plagues on earth before Christ comes. And with mother, we are seeing it in our own eyes right now. The drying up process. That's when I got to the revelation and it said and the Euphrates was dried. I thought it had jumped, but it didn't. It was dried up. This is the beginning of it. It leads us right to the battle. What do y'all think about that? These are the last days. These are. And then tomorrow is what? Promise to no man. Can you all believe we have made it this far? We can make it the rest of the way. If we trust in Jesus. That's right. This is a, and we are blessed to see the fulfillment of these things. I mean, we're actually seeing these things. So now you see the book of Revelation. Like I often told you all, don't you know the book of Revelation includes us and our, and, and our loved ones? Now you see. We are right here at the brink. Don't know the date nor the hour, but if we see these things come to pass, then we know.
and we'll send them be prepared. We have not seen that thing that will come into our atmosphere. It's coming. Apollyon have not been let loose yet. That battle of 200 million have not come forth yet, but we see it's coming. But in the last place where the Euphrates is dried up, making a way for the battle, we see that taking place. We see that it's all in line. It's being prepared. Somebody try to get you to walk on God, walk out on God, come to mind. You know, we all go through that. That's not what I'm saying. But somebody try to get you to turn your back on God, look at him, say, get behind me, say, time is too short. You want me to, you want me to get out of line and walk out on God. Now, I got enough problems I got to fight as it is. With him helping me fight temptation and cleansing me and picking me up. And then you want me to turn my back on him? Come on, never do that. Never do that. Never. I'd rather he chastised me until he cleaned me. Amen. It's too close. Yeah, Jesus. It's yep. too close. We are seeing it. They are proving the Bible right, left and right. They, they, yeah. They're not even trying. Digging up stuff and then, wow, look what we found. The Dead Sea Scrolls is one of the uh, historic findings of Bible you know, archaeological discoveries concerning the scripture was an accident. Over there uh, around the Dead Sea, uh, somebody threw a rock or something down in a cave, something they heard something break. They went down in there. They believe it might have come from the Essence community. They went down in there and found these jars and stuff of all these writings that have been reserved since the destruction of you. And one of them most accurate finding was the Isaiah stone, the Isaiah scroll. Everybody talking about the Bible being translated, losing its meaning. No, no, no. This Isaiah scroll was a scroll from the book of Isaiah, over a thousand years old when they found it. And brother, you could almost read it word for word with the Isaiah we have now. That's how accurate it was. God's not going to let man tear off his word. He said he preserved his word. And they wrote these things by hand. He's not going to let man destroy his word. I don't care how many translations you have. The prophecy is still in all of them. A virgin shall be with child. The Lord is on his way back. If that stuff ain't in there, then guess what? It ain't the Bible. You can't destroy God's word. He's not going to let you do it. A thousand years plus. And then they found some manuscript older than that that was still just as accurate, written by hand. They're finding things left and right, not even trying. There's bearing witness to the scriptures. And now we are living witnesses to a lot of these things. <laughs> Lord, just let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Apostle of Doctrine, Acts 2 and 42, it tells you, the Apostle of Doctrine, the teaching of Christ, is the only teaching. It teaches the whole Bible. God give us wisdom. Let me live long enough to get rid of all lies. Anything that's not right. Let the Holy Ghost pray for me. Let the Holy Ghost search my heart. Pastor, we are almost there. And the Euphrates was dried up. This is a part of the last place. Preparing the way. So the devils see it drying up. So them devils, frog like demons, they getting ready. Amen. They're getting ready to start leaping and hopping to destroy and deceive the nations. Can anybody feel this? Huh? Don't tell me to prove it. Look at the news. I'm using the Bible to explain it. And how long was this spoken? At least from John, this was spoken 2,000 years ago. And Isaiah even spoke of it, so it goes back further than that.
Help us, Jesus. How close we are, people. It's not a joke. It doesn't make a difference how you feel. It's still real. It is still real. Lord, we got enough battles to fight as it is. I'm not going to let just anything. Give up on Jesus. I, I thought I saw you, Euphrates, in there's a a, a newsletter that says Euphrates River is drying up and crisis looms. Just as the Bible warned. It's drying up. Just as, and they're saying the Tigris and Euphrates could dry up by 2040. That's what, seven years? Completely. Well, I thought it was in Isaiah, but I don't quite see it. Take it back for now. Isaiah doesn't quite, I can't find where Isaiah mentions it, so don't take that to heart.
touch you, heal you, deliver, strengthen. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Prepare to be baptized, every one of you, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I love you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, while circumspectly redeeming the time, because the days are evil, and the coming of the Lord is at hand. Until next time, I believe in miracles, I believe in the impossible. I know that God rules of all the affairs of me. This is the time of the end. Hold on just a little while longer. God bless you. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Oh, Lord, I live the world.